Dear students, in this module, we'll be moving into the ab initio methods. We've already looked at homology modeling as well as fold recognition and the 3D, 1D Bowie algorithm. Why do we need to study ab initio modeling? So the simple reason is that there can be cases where the previous methods, they fail. So let's get a brief background on ab initio. So ab initio, the word ab initio means from scratch. So in the homology modeling, we were using the PDB structures. In the fold recognition process, we were using the fold databases. But in the case of ab initio, the ab initio modeling, we don't have any such database on our disposal. So ab initio modeling then utilizes the Enfinson's hypothesis that Every protein structure tries to take the conformation with the minimum energy. So using that uh, hypothesis, we can say that if we have predicted a structure that has a very low energy, then most probably it will be correct. Of course, it can be correct, but there can be situations where such a prediction may not be biologically useful. So we'll discuss that in this module and the later ones. So basically, ab initio methodology tries to predict the structures by minimizing the energy of the predicted structure. So you can take up any sequence for which you don't have any alignment or template and then try to fold that structure, uh, sequence into a structure and compute the energy of the resultant structure. Now, several things come into our mind. First, how do we fold the sequence? Second, how do we compute the energy? Third, how do we minimize this energy? So, all of this is very important and is a matter of great debate in ab initio methods area. As I just mentioned, there can be cases where such sequences are folded by ab initio methods and the predicted structures are not very accurate. So, of course, we need to validate these structures as well. Lastly, the accuracy and applicability of ab initio methods is limited by our own understanding of thermodynamics and underlying energy transitions in different folds. So therefore, our own understanding of these dynamics limits the output, the quality of output from ab initio methods. Now let's discuss the limitations of such methods. If we have a sequence and we have folded it into a structure, then obviously there can be many conformations that we can fold the sequence into. Upon every structure that is output by folding the sequence, we need to compute its energy as well. So this means that it is a computationally very expensive process. So if the energy computation is expensive and that you have to do it for so many different structures, ab initio methods tend to solve only small sequences and their structures. If you have a large sequence, let's say 100,000 uh, 100 kilo, 100, kilodalton protein, which is a very large protein, you may not be able to use ab initio methods because it may take very, very long or maybe forever to compute the optimal structure. So typically, we predict the structures for proteins that have less than 100 residues. You can also consider cleaving your sequence and predicting the structure for portions of your sequence and then bringing them together using ab initio modeling. So as we discussed earlier, if you found a matching sequence in the PDB, then you're happy doing homology modeling. So you had your sequence, you went to the PDB, and you looked at all the homologous sequences, and their structures and then you predicted the structure for 
your own sequence. So let's say if you selected one structure, then you scored this match. However, there was a situation where you could not find these proteins. So if these proteins were not found in the PDB, then you had no choice except to move to ab initio modeling. So in ab initio modeling, what you have to do is you have your same sequence here, sequence, and you try to fold it into all the possible structures and compute their energy. So the one with the minimum energy is selected. The one with higher energy is rejected. Of course, there could be a situation where you find something in the PDB, but it has a low score. So in this case, you used fold recognition or threading. So this is why ab initial modeling is quite useful for cases where you don't have the structure from the PDB. In conclusion, the ab initial methods, they rely on computing the energy of structures and once you compute the energy, you select that structure which has the minimum energy. And once you have calculated the energy that is the minimum for a structure, then you see its plausibility in the biological context as well. Because there can be a situation where ab initio methods can predict a structure that does not have a biological meaning.